get away from the kids. Isn't it funny how when you are young, you have so much energy. And now that we're older, we can't believe we did what we did. Right. But back, back then, I, um, I volunteered and I had five children. And we, we kind of live out in the, well, we do live out in the country and we have chickens and goats and, uh, mm. you know, lots of animals. You we built raised your own chickens house? For meat. We built our house. So we spent a lot of energy doing those kinds of things. And I remember the day I started doing this, I had a pile of scraps because I sewed my clothes and our kids' clothes, which they never liked to wear. Um, and I looked at all my scraps and I thought, I wonder if I could make a picture out of scraps. I didn't know anybody that did such a thing at that time. So I started by making, um, and I'll turn my camera over here. I did a sketch, and I always like to look big, so of course it's big, and it, it, I Janice, did. Janice, make sure you stay close to the microphone. You, you oh. we may rapidly lose you if, you if you're too far away. Okay. I, I started by making um, a poster-sized art piece that I entered in this um, quilt show in Auburn, the Twine Fourth Art Show. You can hear me, right? Yep. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. They weren't impressed with my quilting. Let's put it that way. But they said I had some talent. So <laughs> I didn't get in the quilt show. I had never made a quilt, so I didn't even know what was required. But I made this, and I made four of them, and they were the four seasons. Oh. I called them a sampler. This is yeah. winter, and there's a moon and a... And I use calicos. I love calicos. They have a lot of depth. You know, it's different than painting because you already have the, the, a lot of color in a calico. So I started with that and I just um, stitched around the edge, you know, what they call applique of all the pieces of fabric. Can you see it? Yes. Yes. Janet. Um on, on my screen, it all looks sort of like white and black and gray. Would it be possible okay, to I'll get the camera a little closer. closer so we can see the colors? Mm -hmm. Oh, there's blue oh, in it and so pink. Beautiful. Yes, wow. It looks good. Oh, cool. And that All I did was make a pattern. Okay, your voice. Yeah, you're, you're, I made a pattern. And, and then um, then I just cut out the fabric and I used something called one. We can't, can't hear really, you. Can't hear really you. hear you. When you gotta be right right on the bottom. Um, I used a, a wonder under, which is like a fabric glue that you iron on. Yeah. And I used that under the calico fabric to make um, my pattern. And I'll show you that, just a second. This, this is Wonder Under, and you can buy it in the store. It's very, it's like it's um, tracing paper with a little glue on it. And cool. this you can iron onto your fabric and it rips off easily. You hear me okay, right? Yes. Yep. yes. So you iron it on and then you can even take it off if you don't like it. See, it just comes, pulls right off. Hmm. And then you can stitch over it with your sewing machine. It's, it's great stuff. I buy it by the bolt. And then you uh, can stitch that over top of it. And I'll go over here and I'll show you. When I first start a piece, I make a collage of what I want in the artwork. This are several pictures, some from magazines. Hmm. 
So um, this was a photo from a friend's house. And then hmm. I just added to it. Hmm. And you for <coughs> references, I would, you know, look up like for flowers, say I wanted to do a flower like that in the picture, and then I'd make a tracing of it, and then I could cut it out mm -hmm. and and iron it onto my fabric. I always start with a muslin fabric. And you can use calendars. When I do a workshop, do a calendar picture and then you can trace it exactly as it is and it's a good size. And you can mm. use yellows down here and the blue for the sky, green, and I have a lot of different fabrics that I work from. That's a good excuse to buy fabric. <laughs> I never feel guilty. And then I make a drawing of, of what I want in, when I do it, but you can do, you could trace it with a calendar. And I see all the things I want to highlight. And what I call it is I dumb down the piece by making it simpler and simpler. So that it's going to be doable. See, I just traced out simple patterns. Like I would cut a piece out of this mm -hmm. from fabric. The first one I ever made, I started it, it took me a whole year. And when I got back to it, I couldn't remember what I was doing. Uh -huh. So I made key, a key for it. So each pattern piece had a number. Like this one, I would put a four on it. And then I would make a four next to the fabric swatch so that I could remember what I was doing. So that was very helpful doing that. And I also love color. So I would pick out all kinds of fabrics and the more colorful, the more pattern, the better. And as you can see, if you cut something out like this, you've already got texture. Instead of a, a plain color like this one, the colorful ones add a lot of texture. And that's why I like calico so well. And for sky, I would do something, you know, like a batik. Mm -hmm. Doesn't that make a beautiful sky? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Gorgeous. And I, yeah. And then you can just stitch, you can leave it plain or you can stitch over it however you choose. Now, one of my favorite pieces that I did long, quite a while ago. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. He's beautiful. That's great. Very basic. And it's a golden eagle. Boy. Looks like a golden. <laughs> And I have in the wings, the land, the desert, mm. the mountains. Yes. Grasslands. Beautiful. So you can do all kinds of things. And I have a few pieces. After I got started, I started to add more texture to my mm. pieces. Nice. You can see there's a lot of empty spaces where there's no stitching. Mm -hmm. It's still more of an applique type of <coughs> work. And then I made the sticks and twigs at the foreground with just a zigzag stitch. Mm -hmm. huh. How do you get the sticks in there? Um, it's just black or dark green thread with zigzag stitches. That's neat. And then there's some grasses. Yeah. And that's with a straight stitch that I do sideways. I have just an old Kenmore sewing machine that I used. 
-hmm. It wasn't anything special. It was mostly I turned the fabric around and this also, there's more, you know, can you see the stitches with the grasses? Yes. Yes. Amazing. Oh. Does look different. It's nice. Yeah, and I, I eventually just kept going more and more to um, more stitching and less, less of the fabric would show. My son told me I'd gone crazy. <laughs> here's, one, here's one of um, a lake view, or I mean, a, it's in the other round there. A reflection of rocks in the river. I don't really hear you. A reflection of rocks in the river? Yes, I see the reflection. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's what it looks like. Pretty, very good looking. Yes. Very nice. Janet, on, on the way it's transmitting to my computer, I can't really see stitches. I'm just seeing blocks of color. Yeah, that's um, all I'm seeing. I don't think we get the it definition to see the stitches. stitches. Right. We get the idea, though. Yeah. yeah. I do have so a little piece here. I don't know if I can get this close enough so you can see stitches. Wow. Can you see them? No, I don't. It's, it's the broadband connect connection. I don't. <laughs> and other times when I can't, I don't. I don't know how other people are seeing it. Yeah, now, Janet, it looks the... beautiful, but I don't think these cameras have the definition to see the stitches. No. We do like seeing it. Well, this is the back of it. This is just the part you don't see made oh, wow. from the back oh. of the piece. So interesting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So the back is beautiful oh, too. Yeah. It is. But one time I did a piece for someone and I didn't like it. <laughs> I cut it in half, turned it over and used the back. And they <laughs> didn't ever notice. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to show you how I stitch. So I'll go to my sewing machine and I'll try to do something and see if it works at all for you. I do have a new machine. Mm -hmm. I did a workshop in Washington, D.C. and they gave me 40% off the, a sewing machine. Plus, they paid me quite well. So I was able to buy this Bernina sewing machine. I had spent my whole career sewing on a Kenmore 10, which has no fancy stitches. Mm -hmm. And I just had a zigzag stitch and a smocking stitch. Mm -hmm. So I've never had fancy embroidery machines. But this one is quite fancy. So this is the one I use now. And one of the recent pieces I've been making, this is what it looked like before you, you know, frame it. This is a wood theme. Can you see the wood? We can't hear you. Hard to hear you when you you see the up. woods? Yes, yes, yeah. the woods. Can you see the woods? Yes. 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 I'm going to put a little deer in the background. Still can't hear you. What? Yeah. You might need yeah. a separate microphone. <laughs> oh, I bet they do sell those, don't they? Mm -hmm. They do. Do you have one, Zach? Yeah. I don't. No. Okay, so on the sewing machine, where you know your your pressure foot meets the fabric, do you all sew? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. I loosen the pressure on the presser foot so that the fabric slides around. Oh. Huh. So when I put the presser down, presser foot down, I can still move the fabric. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And then I just use 
my zigzag or a smocking stitch. And I, the important thing is the thread. I use, well, I try to use Grumman or whatever that's called, thread that's a good quality, but I did a lot of Coates and Clark in my day. So uh, it's more dusty and a lot of lint with it and it's hard on your sewing machine, but I didn't know that. And so anyway, what I do, I'll start stitching and show you. It's not rocket science. <laughs> it's more scribbling. Um, <laughs> And, and that's the beauty of it is because I could not sew a straight line. My sisters are wonderful seamstresses. They made suits and blouses and mine were terrible. So I decided to just scribble. So my sewing machine, I can just go back and forth. And if it doesn't look good, I keep doing it until you don't see it anymore. <laughs> There's no magic here. <laughs> so anyway, um, this is a mountain scene. And you just take fabric. This is a batik fabric. And you just kind of look at the batik and think, well, what does that, what does that represent? So little, little swatches of dyed fabric mm. become the valleys in a mountain. Hmm. you know, the crevices. Yeah. And then you just stitch over them until um, you get a depth of, of fabric. I mean, a depth, depth of color. Like in this one, you can see how I stitched a dark thread on the edge of a tree trunk mm -hmm. to show shadow. Oh. And then this mm -hmm. other side over here, well, it's hard for me to see. Um, it's light, right. light color of fabric uh, stitching. Mm -hmm. So it's the same technique as if you were doing artwork on with painting, watercolors, but you're just using fabric and lots of different thread. I have probably 500 spools of thread mm. that I use. Like I said, it doesn't require a fancy machine. It just, um, just being brave and picking out different little scraps of fabric that might look like what you want. And it's fun to do. Mm. Looks like you're having fun. <laughs> it is fun. And um, I used to do it for commissions you know people would um i did festivals and i'd have a tent and i'd go to say rochester clothesline festival i'd have to set up my tent take all my artwork with me and easels and frames and it was a lot of work my mom used to come with me and she'd help me set up and we arranged the pictures on the frames and then people would come for two days and look at the artwork and sometimes people bought pieces. Uh, it's not a great way to earn a living, <laughs> mm. uh, but it's fun and you meet a lot of nice people and I did enjoy it. And I often made pieces for people of things they liked. And Zach's dad was one of my best patrons. <laughs> he was very kind to me and always buying a piece or two for people. So I appreciated that. It kept me going. <laughs> but pretty much now I just sew for my own pleasure. So. And I've got pictures of some of those art, art pieces too. Um, and maybe that- yeah, Why don't you show them? Maybe we'll be able to see a little better detail since this is off of a PowerPoint. Um, so- Okay. I'll show it, you can-, you can uh, you can say whatever comes to mind, yeah.
Nature's tap Tapestries is uh, Janet's, um, the name of your- My little business. Your little business. <laughs> right. Here's a quick, uh, this is a magazine oh, or- a, No, a uh, it was a brochure. Brochure? Oh. Yes, and that top piece with the orange was when we were hiking in Pennsylvania and we came to a clearing where they had cleared all the trees out to make telephone lines. Wow. <laughs> and that was these beautiful ferns that had, you know, um, frosted and they were, it was probably in October. We used to go down to Zach's place in the, in Pennsylvania and uh, all the ferns were orange. It was, it was a beautiful place. Wow. Mm. So how many colored threads would you say thread are represented in, in this? Different colors, you mean? Yeah. Oh, geez. And the dried up threads. You got, I mean, there's at least four or five and maybe more. You got like. I think so, yeah. La layers of it. Yes. And it becomes very thick like a tapestry mm -hmm. uh, by the time you finish. And down, down below, that's a rock. It wasn't really that color, but I made it that color just because I could. <laughs> and that's in that's the around eggs. That's amazing. And right. the tree, the the um, beech tree, right? And not beech. Um, Birch. Help me, Zach. Birch. 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 Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not a scene. They are really nice. Wow. Yeah. Oh, that's so you can see the, the the fabrics in the water here and some of the thread work. The Reflections bowl. are so much fun to work with, yeah. <laughs> wow. We we did a lot of canoeing in the Adirondacks and it was so inspirational. We just Zach's parents and our families all camped together. And we just had so much fun in the Adirondacks. Yeah, mm. that's you Pennsylvania. Can really, you can really see the thread in this one. Yeah, a little tiny stream. Mm-hmm. With little tiny waterfalls here and there. Whoa! Wow! That's really nice. Oh my goodness! Yes. Who owns this piece, Zach? My dad, I think. Oh no, wait. Maybe, maybe it's Tess. I'm not sure. My sister <laughs> has a couple. Um, that's the Big Moose River on a frosty morning. Lovely. Well, the the sun is sort of coming around the corner, but it's not really. And you know, using textiles is really a wonderful way to do artwork. It has so much character to it. The, mm -hmm. the, you know, those trees there on the edge where the sun's coming through. Mm -hmm. Some of that is just the fabric making out those colors. Right. Wow. Oh. oh. oh this this might be Owasco Lake. Yeah, that's what it says. Oh, yeah, it does. Right. <laughs> this is where we live. That's right, a scene right below our house. We have a camp on the shore, and that's what it looks like down there. It's interesting. If you look at the branches, you can actually see the, the, how you ran the, the sewing machine through there. But mm -hmm. you only see that if you're looking for it. If you're not, you see the branches. Mm -hmm. One time I was at an art show, and I was standing behind some people looking at my artwork. And they were saying, what is that? You know, they couldn't mm -hmm. even tell what it was. Mm -hmm. It's kind of fun. This is, Zach knows where this is. <laughs> Pennsylvania, an outcropping where his dad likes to take a nap. Well, that could be a lot of, that could be a lot of places. My dad <laughs> nap. a lot of places. <laughs> this, this one hang, hangs in my living room. This is the one that, that I have. 
Janet, what's really cool is right. the way you let the fabric wrinkle to make it look like, you know, the texture of the rock. Right here? Yeah. Yeah. That is cool. Yeah. Yeah, you have to let things do what they want to do. I learned that the hard way. <laughs> oh, that's nice too. And this place no longer exists. That's why it's nice it's there. This, this was, I can tell you why. This is my parents' home. This is the house that I grew up in. Mm. I had a fire, I don't know, 15 oh. years ago. Oh, so there's a house. To, just to the side of where this one used to be, but this is just a, a memory of of uh, of what used to be. Mm. Well, you know, house fires were, th <coughs> they still happen, but they happened quite often in the past. My grandparents' farm burned the house and they always, uh, the timeline in their lives was before the fire or after the fire. <laughs> And um, it was very traumatic, wasn't it, Zach? Yeah, yeah, it's a big thing to 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 get over and to deal with. And mm -hmm. I mean, we've they've got a, a beautiful house now that we really like, but uh, it was a it was a rough couple of years to get there. I think. Yes, it's hard on everyone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's one of my favorite places in the whole world. I don't know how many of you have been to Fillmore Glen, but there's a nice walk up into the woods and not very far in, you see this, it's called the cow sheds, a waterfall. And the, the cow sheds are off to the side where the cows actually used to stand underneath in a hot summer day to keep cool. It was a rock mm -hmm. overhang. So it was natural. It was uh, not, I mean, too, too big and open to be called a cave, but it was certainly shelter. And it's, it, it was so fun to do that. And like I said, Zach's father's wonderfully purchased many of these pieces. And I love, I love that one. Mm -hmm. I like to go visit it. Oh. They're like your babies. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So well, that's it. That's all the one. That's all the, the the pieces that I have pictures of. So it's pretty good. I have some big pieces, but I couldn't get them off the wall. Um, I did this lady in Syracuse in um, Manlius commissioned me to make a couple art pieces for her, and when I did them, she thought they were too bright. They were too lively for her. So I kept them and they're huge. They're like three feet by two feet, I think. Wow. And um, so now they hang in my living room. <laughs> I could have never afforded that for myself. <coughs> I take you in there, but I'm not sure if, if I can do it. I could try. Should I give it a try? try give it a try. Yeah. Go ahead and see what happens. All right. Crash. Okay, this is my art room here. And I have this wonderful room. I don't know if you can tell. So, looking out the window, you can't really hear what Janet's saying, but that's a Wasco Lake. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, through that window. Beautiful view. Yes. <clears throat> Surrounded with gardens. You can see some greenhouses. That's uh, Jib's her husband, and he's a really um, prolific actor. We can't really hear you, Janet. Oh, okay. Well, quick. I guess if you're right in front of it, you, you might be able to hear you, but it doesn't really pick up if you're off to the side. Oh my goodness. Ooh. Oh, yes. Oh, very nice. Woo. <laughs> Actually, it's amazing that someone would think that they were too lively. I know. I mean, how can something <laughs> that beautiful be too lively? <laughs> well, to each his own, right? <laughs> yeah, true. Gorgeous. It looks so peaceful. You know, mm -hmm. nice. Mm -hmm. 
Now, did you do that as a, a what would they call it, a diptych or a triptych? Yes, kind of yes, mm -hmm. right. And the, the beautiful frames are made by Hagar. Can't hear you, Janet. Can't really hear you. The frames are set back in. There is a Can't hear you. Okay. You got to get Janet. right. You got to show the picture and then, yeah, stand right in front of it. Or you can change the, you can change your tablet so that the camera's reversed. Those are nice. Oh, you can continue to talk into it. Oh, yeah. How do, how do I do that? I'd love to know. My son <laughs> keeps telling me to do it. <laughs> I don't know how to do that. Oh, view, maybe? View will change the number of people you see. That'll be either the the Brady Bunch oh. style or, or you know, that's just how you look at Zoom. Oh, that's gorgeous. Oh, my goodness. That is pretty. That is. <laughs> Must be under settings. That's a painting there that she just passed. Mm -hmm. The little girl. Can you see that? Yes. Yep, we can see it. Yes. <laughs> that, that painting was done by my son, Raphael. You'll get you get to see Rob in pictures if you tune in tomorrow for my for my 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 slideshow. <laughs> Are you gonna do Rob's pictures? He's in a few of them. Yeah, it's the Trans Siberian. So he, he, he. Oh, I would love to see that. What time oh, well, is it's, that? It's a. Uh, what time is it? One o'clock tomorrow? I forget. <laughs> I think so. I think it's one. Yeah. Oh, I've never seen those pictures. That was a pretty famous uh, adventure. <laughs> I'll send you a link. You're welcome to join up. <laughs> okay, thank you. Will Roth be there? I didn't think to share with him, but I could invite him. Might as well. It'd be nice to have a little back and forth, some shared memories. But yeah. Uh -huh. I found a little doohickey in the upper left corner of the iPad that says switch camera and it works. In the left hand corner, I have recording spotlight. Oh. Hi. So it spotlights each of you. Is that right? Wanda? What? Spotlight. I see you on full screen. <laughs> spotlight will change it to whoever's talking, I think. Okay. Okay. Uh huh. And the one that says gallery view gives me a picture of each one of you at once. Right. So, voice. I'm on voice mode. Can you hear me now? Yep. Yeah. Is it is it better? Oh, you're great now. I think. Now, now that it's over. <laughs> Do you have any questions? Um, I have a question. How how is quilting and applique different? Is the amount of stitching that's used or quilting is three sandwich, three pieces of fab, well, two pieces of fabric and a batting in between. Okay. And you stitch through all three of them. Mine is one piece of fabric, well, two pieces actually, because you have your muslin and then you put your art fabric over the top and stitch over it. So it's, it's not quilting. And applique is pretty much going around the edge of the fabric with your sewing machine. And what I do, I think they call it stippling. And somebody can correct me on that because I'm not a quilter. But I think that's how they refer to it. So, so you don't call your work applique, you call it something different? I, I don't understand. I call it machine embroidery. 
Okay. Because I don't know what to call it. Okay. I really don't know Fair what enough. to call it. So. Fair enough. The embroidery is good, yeah. Um, or thread painting, people call it thread painting. Yeah. But yeah. Um, and I do do workshops. So if in the future you would like to get together and do something, let mm. me know. Yeah. It could be fun. Maybe next fall. Yeah. Back when we're done with this and virus. We'll start, yeah. <laughs> Did you, you folks get together in the center and do things together? Yeah. Prior to the pandemic, every Tuesday they'd be there from 12 to 2, uh, working on their own project projects. Now and nice. would lead 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 a group project, but mostly it was more sort of a social thing as people did what you know what whatever project they were working on. Well, it sounds like a wonderful thing to do together. You know, like a, the bees of the old days mm. when people would get together and work on their projects. Yeah, and we gossip a lot. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, <laughs> women need to do that. <laughs> Where's the glue that keeps everybody correct? <laughs> right? Well, I think men do it too. They just don't tell us. <laughs> like, there you go. <laughs> so. So if, is there any other questions? No, that was too beautiful. I don't know what questions they Thank you. Yeah, really enjoyed it. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't know. Pictures. I well, it was a lot of fun to get my stuff out and show you. Mm -hmm. I haven't done a uh, lecture in a long time. It seems like it's <laughs> well, been you're forever. Good. You're good at it. Right, it was wonderful. Yeah. And I learned how to switch the camera finally. My son's been saying that for a couple of years. <laughs> yeah, my, it's, it seems I'm like to uh, it on my computer and I can't find it. So you're way ahead of me, Pam. <laughs> I mean, they, we, oh, well. we can appreciate the 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 uh, the artwork, the the detail to some extent. Really, we'd have to do something in person to, to yeah, really yeah. get the That's full effect. So good. yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Outside of the pandemic, do you ever do actual like shows? You know, like painters. I, yeah, I, I have. I haven't lately. Now I'm making pizzas, but. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think my son-in-law has a little uh, brewery and they have sell pizza. So my husband and I are making a oh, hundred pizzas a week. Why would you said pizzas? <laughs> yeah, I do everything. <laughs> Look, nothing definitely. that makes any money though. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. No. At least you're having fun. We, well, it's sort of fun. And the output looks good. No, <laughs> but the art is really what I do feel I love the best, you yeah. know, mm. other than grandchildren, which I love for them to come to. And, mm -hmm. and, and I do like to do art. I've enjoyed meeting you. It's been fun. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so much. Yes, thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Janet. You're welcome. It was my pleasure. Yeah, thanks, yeah. Janet. And thank you. If you'd yeah. like to come uh, come along tomorrow, I'll I'll send the invitation now and maybe uh maybe you can fit it in. I would love to see that. Um we always heard great stories about their Trans-Siberian trip from China to mm -hmm. Russia, right? Yep. Yeah, I went with uh, Janet's son and then another friend of ours. So um, I don't. I, I really don't think that we. I've ever done a slideshow of this, uh, putting the pictures. So it, it was fun to revisit that. Um, and we're glad you made it back without ending up in the gulag. <laughs> there was a. That, that, there was a uh, interaction with the Russian police that that almost got got sent us in a bad place, but it worked out all right. Thank I guess goodness. I can tell that story tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, very nice it's, meeting you. It's nice, yeah, nice to see you all. Thank you, Janet. And we'll, thank you so thank much. You. Thank we'll have you. you back at some point. And uh, in the meantime, see you tomorrow or next week or whenever. Okay. Everybody okay. stay safe.
Yes. Yeah. 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 